Hi everybody, in this video we're going to talk about navigating the Zoom meeting interface and talk about some of the buttons that are in there when you're having a live Zoom session with students. So this whole process starts over here from my Zoom dashboard. I've got to go to the Zoom website, I've got to log in with my Zoom account, probably did that by going through Clever and that popped me over to Zoom. And then I went over here to the meetings dashboard on the, or the meetings menu on the left side to see my meeting. So I've got an upcoming meeting, it's over here for period one. I have the ability to start the meeting and launch it right over from here. Or even if I'm inside this period one meeting and uh, you know I've been adjusting all the settings in here, I can start the meeting from here. So to kick this whole process off, you're gonna click start this meeting. And when you do so, Zoom is going to ask to run some software in the background. So I'm gonna say yes, open that Zoom software that's installed on my computer. And then it's gonna launch my Zoom meeting for me. So the first thing it says is, hey, how do you wanna join? I'm gonna join with computer audio. I'm not calling in on the phone. And boom, my Zoom meeting is running over here. Nobody's joined it yet, but my students will be joining in a minute. So let's talk about this interface. Let's start over here in the upper left-hand corner. If you click this little information dot, it will remind you what the meeting ID is and the password in case you need to pass that out to your students. Here's also the link to this Zoom meeting. This is the thing that hopefully you posted in Google Classroom or you sent out via Aries Communication so your students can get in there. But if you need to get it back, you just click the little info up button up there. Same thing over here, you're using an encrypted connection so it shows that you're secure. And since I set mine up to automatically record, you'll notice it is recording right now for me. I can pause or stop the recording up here, but according to the MOU, I need to make sure I record my whole session. So I'm just gonna let this keep running. All right, what you will notice is that um, right now you don't see anything on the screen. And that's because if you look down here in the bottom left-hand corner, you'll notice my mic is on and you'll see the little volume meter there, but you'll notice my webcam is off. So the first thing I'll do is I'm gonna turn my webcam on by clicking start video. This doesn't mean recording, it means turning on uh, the webcam so that I am sharing video with my students. So now I've got both on, I have both my webcam and you can see me, as well as my microphone that are participating. If at any point you need to mute your mic because you've got some loud background noise and, and you don't want students to hear that, you can always just come down here and click the, the uh, mic icon. And when you do that, nothing will happen. As you'll notice, once you click that, even if I'm still talking, you can't hear anything happening. So you can mute the mic, turn it on or off by clicking that button, and you can turn your video on or off by clicking this button. If you ever run into issues with a mic not working or a webcam not working, you can get to all those settings by clicking these little arrow buttons up here uh, or in the, the upper right-hand corner of those buttons. If I click this, you'll notice I can pick which microphone I wanna use. I have a couple plugged into my computer. I can pick which speakers I wanna use. And then I also have all of these additional settings down here if I need to make adjustments. Same thing with video. If you click this, you'll get into your video settings, including choosing virtual backgrounds. That happens right over there. All right, now while I've been talking, you'll notice student two has entered the waiting room and wants to join this meeting. And it's a little pop up here from the thing called participants. So if I click this admit button, it will add that student into this session. Let me do this real quick. Yep, so the student should be populating in here any second and then I will have student one or I will have myself and student two. You'll notice student two has their webcam off right now and their mic is also muted. So now we've gone to this. If we have a whole class, we'll get a whole bunch of tiles over here. Okay, let's take a look at this next button. It's called security. And this is one you're probably gonna wanna use quite a bit during your session. If you click this, you'll notice you get several facilitator security options. The uh, waiting room is currently enabled. If I wanna turn the waiting room off and just let people come in automatically, I can turn it off here. We don't recommend that, leave that one on. But if I have all of my students here and I don't wanna manage the waiting room anymore, I could lock my meeting. And that means nobody else can get into this meeting. Be aware though, if a student gets bumped out, if they lose their internet connection, they won't have a way to get in back into your meeting either unless you unlock the meeting. So that's where you can lock and unlock your meeting. You also have the ability from here to determine what participants can do. So right now participants cannot share their screen. They cannot use the chat feature. They can rename themselves. I probably want uh, some of these things changed probably don't want them to rename themselves um, unless I had a student that was not using their name and I needed to turn that on for a minute. And I might wanna turn chat on. So all you have to do is click it and you'll notice that ch changes it from uh, enabled to disabled or back and forth. 
This is really helpful for teachers because during your meeting, you probably want sometimes where you want students to be able to use the chat feature to ask you questions or provide help to one another. And other times where maybe you're going to be doing some direct instruction, and you don't want the chat to be on. You can turn that on or off during your session. Same thing with share screen. There are some times where I might want to be the only one that can share my screen and I don't want students to do that at all. And other times in the meeting where I might want them to share their screen, maybe we're doing a uh, digital whiteboard activity using one of the things like uh, whiteboard.fi and students are working on their own whiteboards to trying to work out some math and then I want them to be able to share their solution to the problem, I would turn screen share on for students during that time. Finally, I have the ability to remove a participant from the security uh, menu as well in case somebody that shouldn't be in here gets in here or in case a student is being inappropriate and I just need to remove them and then follow up on it later. All of that is in the security area. Now let's talk about how we manage participants during this meeting. If you click this button, it will pop out your little participant menu over here on the right hand side. And you'll see for each participant, you, will, uh, you have a few options. So here's student two that has joined my session. Right now their mic is off and their video camera is off. If I hover over this, I have the ability to unmute a student and I have the ability to um, remute a student as well. I also, if I click more, I have some more options over here for students. So this is where you can go student by student and adjust certain settings. You also have the ability in the bottom right hand corner to invite additional people to your session. So this is one way to get additional emails sent out and this gives you the meeting password over here and it gives you the meeting ID up here at the top if you need to get those. But I really like this feature too. I can mute all students all with one click or I can unmute all students all with one click. We recommend having students muted most of the time unless they're gonna be an active contributor. And so um, if you wanna adjust those settings, you can click this jelly bean here and this gives you the things like mute participants upon entry turn that stuff on and off. All right, let's talk about a couple of these other features. Um, we mentioned chat before. Let's discuss that really quickly. This chat button, if you click this, this is a group chat for this Zoom meeting, and this is where students can uh, type questions. They can provide answers and maybe help to their classmates, and this is a great way for me to be able to communicate with students as well. Some of your students may not feel wholly comfortable sharing live on their webcam and their microphone. They might feel a little bit more comfortable typing something into the chat box. So we recommend uh, perhaps providing both of those as ways that you can interact with students and ways that they can participate in the class. There are sudden activities where you might need them to speak on microphone, but you may find that some students are a little bit more willing to participate if they can use the chat. That just kind of comes with the territory with uh, virtual sessions and things like that. So this is where you can access the chat when it is enabled. You also have these couple of buttons over here. You have pause and stop a recording. So you, these two buttons allow you to pause your recording or stop it all together. Again, the MOU says we should keep the, the recordings going all the way until the end of the session. So we don't really recommend using these, but they're there if you need them. Um, and the last one that I want to go over is this reactions button over here. One thing you can do is you can click this reactions button and you can add a clap or you can add a thumbs up during the meeting. So this is another way for you and for students to be able to contribute and to be engaged during the meeting without everybody having to be on mic all at the same time. All right, some of these other things we didn't talk about, polls, screen share, breakout rooms. We will have additional videos on each one of those features to give you all the ins and the outs. Uh, but in this video, we wanted to go over the general interface and the main things you need to know. Before we wrap this up, let's talk about what's up here in the upper right-hand corner. Right now, my view is speaker view. So what this is showing me is it is highlighting whoever is speaking, or I'm sorry, it is highlighting whoever is speaking in kind of a grid view right now. If I want to change to speaker view, I can click this. It will then make whoever the speaker is as the, the largest thing here, and then everybody else will be kind of in like small tiles. And if I want the gallery view instead, I would click this, and then I get kind of the Brady uh, Bunch effect of all of those things at once. One note for you really quickly, whatever view you have enabled, that's what Zoom is recording right now. Zoom is basically recording whatever this screen looks like. So if you want it to record the whole grid of all of your students, make sure that you're in this grid view like we're in right now. Um, and if you click the other one, it'll toggle over and it'll kind of start recording that one instead. Last thing, how do we get out of here? You're done with the session. You wrapped everything up. It went great. You're going to go to this red end button in the bottom right hand corner. And this is where we end meetings. When you click this, no, notice that you get a couple of options you're gonna wanna use this end meeting for all. That will take you out of the meeting and it will end it for all students. 
We do not recommend clicking leave meeting, just so you know what will happen. You will leave the meeting, but it will continue going for all the students without you being present, and we definitely don't want that in this scenario. So end meeting for all. Once you click this, it will end the meeting for you, and this is where it will start to do a rendering of your recording. If you picked cloud recording, it will do the render. It will send you an email once that is available um, and saved up on the Zoom server. If instead you picked local recording, you will get a little pop-up here that says, hey, where do you want to save this file on your computer? By default, it's going to go into a Zoom folder, but if you want to save it somewhere else on your computer, you can also do it there. We'll have additional follow-up meetings, like I said, for breakout rooms, or I should say follow-up videos for breakout rooms, um, for things like uh, screen share and whiteboard, and also for recording options. So if you want to learn more about those features, make sure you check out those as well. Thanks. I hope you got a lot out of this video.